Hey everyone, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at theming a native script Angular 2 project. So as some of you know, uh, who have worked with native script or even looked at native script, out of the box, the UI components don't look too appealing. Uh, it's not that because uh, the guys at native script have chosen to do a very bad job at theming these components. It's because they actually use the native components that either iOS or Android use, and they leave it up to you to style them. However, uh, native script has actually released a theme uh, that you can install it's a CSS theme uh, to make these components look very good without having to put a lot of effort into them so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a basic project and we're gonna see how it looks and then we're gonna theme that project to make it look even better so you'll notice I do have my terminal open um, I do have native script installed I'm using currently 2.3.1 um, in the future it may change uh, but Native script as a language in Angular 2, though, probably won't change too much. So this tutorial should remain pretty valid. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a fresh project on my desktop. I'm going to say TNS create theme project. And then I'm going to use the ng tags for Angular 2. So with that project created, what you want to do is you want to navigate into it. So we call it theme project. Uh, and then we want to add some build platform. So we can say TNS platform add iOS. And then TNS platform add Android. Uh, so I'm actually only going to be demoing the iOS portion. Um, but if you're using uh, Linux or Windows, you'll probably want to use Android. If you are using a Mac, you could use, use either. Um, this tutorial will hold true for both build platforms. So with the platforms uh, added, I'm going to go ahead and clear it. I'm also going to open up the project in my editor of choice. Uh, so I'm going to be using Atom. Uh, you can use whatever editor you want. Uh, that's perfectly fine. All right, so I do have the project open. Uh, we're going to be spending all of our time inside of the app directory of the project. Uh, and we're going to be looking at uh, a, a few files. So we're going to be looking at the app CSS file. And we're going to be looking at the app.component.html file. Uh, we won't be worrying about the TypeScript file, although let's go ahead just for the heck of it, just clear out all of the uh, class uh, variables and, and functions inside of it. Although it really doesn't matter if you leave them in or not. All right, so starting with the HTML file, what we're going to do is we're going to create a basic form and a basic button. So this is using the stack layout. However, we're going to add an action bar at the top just for um, make it a little more cosmetically appealing. All right, so we have an action bar. Um, let's go ahead and add some form elements. Uh, so we're going to be using a lot of stack layout here. And if you've never used a stack layout, it's a we're going to be using a vertical stack. So every every component is going to reside underneath the previous component. Uh, stack layouts do other stuff as well. But for our purposes, we're just going to leave it as vertical. So the first thing that we want to do is let's go ahead and add a stack layout. Uh, let's just start with, a, with a, a label. So we're going to say label. Uh, we're going to say text equals. And then let's say this is uh, first name. And this label is going to go with a particular form element. So this is going to go with text field. And uh, this text field, it's not going to be bound to anything. Um, we're just going to have just blank hint. The next one, we're going to have another label. So let's just copy and paste because it'll be roughly the same. Let's call this last name. And then finally, we're going to have a button. And this button is going to have the text submit. Uh, so what we want to do is we actually want to check out and see uh, what this looks like as of now. So open up your terminal. Again, I'm going to be running it in iOS, but I'm going to say TNS emulate. You know, at this time, I'm actually going to live sync it. But first, we have to build it. Build iOS, because as of right now, uh, live sync does not build 
uh, the first time. So we have to build it the first time. All right, with the project built, now we can say TNS Live Sync iOS Emulator, and then we're going to watch for changes. So as you can see, we do have uh, a few items in here that we just added. We added the action bar. We have a label. We have an input field right below that label, another input field, and then a button. So you'll notice that they look a little odd. They're a little centered. That's because by default, the app.cs file has a bunch of weird CSS styles. I don't necessarily agree with why they're in the default template, uh, but let's go ahead and, and remove them and save it again. So with live sync enabled, uh, it should refresh the page momentarily. All right, so it didn't it didn't refresh the CSS. That's all right. Uh, it's still a uh, work in progress, I believe. For the most part, it does a pretty good job of the live sync. So we're just going to TNS emulate iOS. It should repackage the CSS. Most of the time when I do live sync, it does uh, recompile the CSS for me, no problem. All right, perfect. So that looks a little better. Uh, so what we have here is we have a button. This button is actually full width. Um, this is an iOS button. We have our form elements. They are uh, left aligned. Uh, everything sounds good so far, but they're not they're not very attractive. This whole thing is is not too attractive. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to make some changes here. Um, and inside of a, before we start working with the CSS, we're actually going to include the theme package. Uh, so this is from the native script website for themes. Uh, we're going to actually install it by saying npm install native script theme core hyphen hyphen save. So what that did was it installed the theme. It also added an import to our CSS file. Uh, so this will import the light theme. If you want to include the dark theme, change light with dark. Uh, there are some changes that need to be made as well because now we need to take the classes that are available inside of this theme and apply them. Um, and that's going to come with a few changes to our uh, XML as well. So first of all, uh, what we want to do is we want to wrap, well first we want to say stack layout class equals, and this is going to be form. And inside the form, uh, we want each one of these to be an input element. So they're going to be its own stack layout. All right, so stack layout, um, it also has the class of input field. And you'll notice that this is very similar. It's not the same by far, but very similar to Bootstrap. Uh, so the same kind of rules apply. So we have the label. Uh, the label is going to have class label. This text field right here, it's going to have a class of input. And we're going to apply the same thing uh, for the next. So I'm just going to change them again. This is going to say last name. Uh, we also do have our button. So our button is going to have a class as well. It's going to say class BTN, BTN primary. So there's a list of different colors that you can have as well um, to make this all possible. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we have so far. I'll just hit up arrow a couple times. See if it compiles at this time. So it didn't quite it didn't quite do what we wanted. So it looks like um, Live Sync might be having some issues. Um, there may be a bug ticket open for it. Uh, let's go ahead and just try to emulate it the old-fashioned way. All right, so it still didn't work. I'm wondering if I have a typo somewhere. 
I do. Uh, so actually, it's class. I misspelled class. So let's uh, resave it. So maybe maybe I I gave uh, Live Sync improper credit here. Looks like it probably wanted to work. Yeah. So uh, we just we just now created a more attractive button. We have these labels that look a little more uh, attractive. Uh, there's proper padding between the form elements, um, giving it an overall better appearance. Now there's there's you can apply way better theming than I did um, using the CSS that was available in this particular theme. Um, but I'm not much of an artist myself. Uh, but this is substantially better than the default that comes out of the box. Uh, so there's a website for this. Uh, you can go on the native script website and look for themes. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of documentation um, similar to what you would find in Bootstrap. Um, and it'll help you design a more attractive application with not a whole lot of effort.